Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me. I'm Ryan Eastman, coming to you live courtside in Baltimore as the San Jose Thrust are on the road challenging the Baltimore Spirits. Not many games left in the playoff chase. Both teams fighting to make it into the playoffs. We're going to see them heading off with a tip-off now. Key matchups to watch for Victor Voss going against Alessandro Serra. Prominent point guards matching up here tonight. Also, keep an eye on the center position with Barnaby Jazz going up against Quintessa Hartnett. We're going to see Quintessa winning the tip off. Rockwell is going to get the ball, passing over to Victor Voss at the top of the perimeter. Fox is getting a screen from Quintessa. Decides to diss over to her. Back over to Rockwell, who's going to go for three, left to open. No good. Jazz gets the rebound. Theodore is going to have to start hitting those shots if, unless he wants them to keep it open. We're going to see a costly turnover from Sarah, but not watching where he was stepping. He will step out of bounds. Turnover, Baltimore's ball once again. Victor going to bring the ball to court for Baltimore. Traded from San Jose last season. I should say last offseason. Boss down to Anderson Rhodes, the rookie. Rattles in and out, no good. Back call gets the rebound over Quintessa. Three on one fast break to match. Going to take the ball up himself off the backboard. Good. First bucket goes the way of the thrust, giving them a 2 to 0 lead 50 seconds into the game. See if Baltimore is able to answer back. Dishing over to Rockwell. Goes for a screen. Gets into the paint. Pump fakes. Dishes it back out to the rookie. Back over to Balls. Back ends up in Rockwell's paws. Goes for a 10-footer, rattles around, but it's good in the end. Ball went a long way to end up back in his paws. Can't argue the results, though. Bucket went in with an open jumper. From 10 feet out, we're going to see a quick shot coming out from Lawyer. No good from the top of the perimeter. Baltimore. Setting up a play, it looks like an isolation, or they're going to try and screen it over to Rockwell, who's down the post. Backing up against Gakar. High arcing shot, no good. Sarah. Going to bring the ball before San Jose over to Lawyer again. Back to Sarah. Reaching foul call on Dunbar. Thought she may have poked it out there, but called on the contact. Going to give San Jose 14 seconds on the shot clock. Enough time to draw up a play, but that's about it. No chance to go for secondary options with that little time. Lawyer going to get the ball deep in the woods. Spin move, gets it open, drives into the paint, lays it up and out the backboard. Little spin move, broke away from his defender. The rookie was not ready for that. Meerkat showing a good burst of speed there to get away from his defender. And we're going to see Baltimore trying to call for a screen again, using Hart and Sai. Uh, boss, the ball now. Trying to get back into the paint of his own. This is over to Hart now on the perimeter. Almost like out of bounds. Had to dish it to Dunbar, who has to go for a last second three, but good. Shot clock was winding down on her, but able to drain the bucket from long range, giving Baltimore a one point lead. Five to four. First three pointer of the night for either team. Sarah forced to pick up the ball, giving her to Jazz from the free throw line. Nothing but net on the swish. San Jose takes the lead once again. Back and forth game early so far. Three minutes have just about expired in the first quarter. Rockwell gets a lane to the basket. Gets Jazz to pump fake. Boss comes over and gets the loose ball and fouled by Sarah on the way up. Chance for two now at the line. Almost stripped away there, but quick thinking Fox was able to get a hold of it. Get on the first. Rattles around, but go on the second. Match passing over Gakar. Gakar high pass to Sarah is able to crowd it in though. Had to reach high there. Weasel dishes over to the shark down low in the post. Backing up. Has the advantage over Rockwell in terms of height and weight. Gets the hook shot to go and the foul. Chance for an and one opportunity here. And good. San Jose with a two point lead. Nine to seven. 
fast-paced game coming out so far. Neither team really missing many opportunities. Even the mistakes are being covered with quick thinking plays on the court, crowding loose balls, not allowing turnovers to happen besides Sarah's. Oh, wow, as I say that, Victor Vos loses track of where he is, slips out of bounds. I almost cursed him there, mentioning how Sarah's mistake on the first possession. Now it's come back to haunt him with a one. San Jose a chance to extend their lead a little bit here. Lawyer deep in the woods, dishes back over to Sarah. Sarah pump fakes, uses a screen from Gackhardt again to the paint, gives it to go. Ends up back in his paws though on the perimeter, forced to pick it up, back to Lawyer. Five seconds left, back to Sarah for three from the right sideline, off the iron, no good. Sarah wanted to do a give and go play with DeWitt, but no link the basket, we see Anderson Rhodes. Got open there, laid it up and in off the glass. Ties it back up at nine apiece. Only four minutes gone in the first quarter. Jazz on the perimeter. Gonna pass it over to Sarah. Sarah playing isolation, has a chance to get to the basket if he can get by his defender. He had a second there to possibly get by, but stopped. Two seconds, forced to take a long shot from three, no good. Jazz had Positioned himself under the basket for the offensive rebound, but it just bounced too far of his reach. And you see Dunbar passing up the balls. Rockwell going for three now. Nothing but net. They're going to have to play him closer at that range. Giving Baltimore the largest lead of the game at three now. Though that lead is very minimal given the early goings of this game. Sarah calls for a screen, gives it to Gakar. Gakar was open from long range, could have gone for the shot. Jazz, from the same spot he took his first shot, and good. Little messier though, bounced around on the rim, but still was able to make it. Don't be surprised if you see him using his size to bully the defenders, even though Quintessa ma matches up well against him. Theodore from left sideline for three, good again. They're gonna have to start playing him closer. They cannot allow him to get open if he's gonna heat up from long range. Again, another screen. Jazz had an open lane at the basket if he had continued in. Decides to take it himself. Pump fakes blocked though. Gakar the offensive rebound. Jazz goes up again. No good this time. Gakar another rebound blocked once again. Lawyer this time corrals it. San Jose is putting the ball up multiple times but can't get any baskets to convert. Need to slow it down. Get a screen. Lawyer laying to the basket. Up and no good. Tried to dance around Contessa who is setting up for a charge possibly. Of course the Meerkat take an odd uh, difficult pose trying to get in but we see Vos actually Dunbar was stripped there. Lawyer going to drive up the horde. Three on three fast break. Sarah ends up with the ball. Lays it up and in. First bucket for San Jose in two minutes. And with that Baltimore is going to call their first time out of the game. Nothing yet to panic about for either team. Few messy turnovers for both. However, as long as they go tit for tat with those turnovers, it's not going to cost them too much in the end, but it might come down to a minimal difference in score if these teams keep playing so aggressively. Rockwell tries to spin move, forced out of bounds. Good defensive play coming in from Natch there. Forcing Rockwell to make a decision whether he was going to have to go out of bounds or try and hug the baseline and couldn't walk the tightrope with the Red Fox bodied up against him like that. We're going to see substitutions for both teams. The rookie Baston who's coming in for San Jose as well as Mendoza. Vora in as well. Baston on the perimeter. Given the Bali Mali. No good. Victor Vos matching up against the rookie now. Chance to possibly abuse this gap in experience. Playing isolation against him, in fact. Really wants to challenge him. Baston Hoots managed to keep him on the perimeter, but finally Victor Vos drives in and up and over him. Taking him one-on-one -on -one and winning that battle. Beach Martin was not able to keep him on the perimeter for the whole possession of the shot clock. And now he's going to try and match up against him on his own. Answer back. Decides to dish it down to Barksky, who has gone into the paint, lays it up and in. Both teams really utilizing 
their paint presence this game, especially San Jose. Outside of Jazz's long twos at, from the free throw line, all their baskets have come in the paint, whereas Baltimore has made two threes thanks to Rockwell. Speaking of which, posted up at the free throw line, gives it over to Goldshine. Goldshine, high arcing ball, no good, but Samuel Roberts with the offensive rebound and the putback. Aurora acquired from Hawaii during the uh, free agency. Ball tipped out of bounds by Baltimore. Bassenhut was unable to pass the ball safely to his intended target. We're going to see a couple more substitutions for both teams, bringing the full benches out. Give them a chance to rest their starters for the start of the second quarter. Bassenhut's spin move gets open. Had a shot, decided to pass it out to Barsky, though. Back to Bassenhut for three. In and out, no good. The ball with the rebound. Had a chance there multiple times to take a shot. Ended up deciding to pass it instead. A bit dangerous to receive the ball. Driving, driving into the paint. Getting contact from Mendoza. Chance for two from the line. Extend this lead potentially up to six if he's good on both. Get on the first. 20 to 15 currently with three minutes and 38 seconds left. And with that, Baltimore pushes it to 21. San Jose needs to answer back with their bench. They have young talent. And then the veteran Barsky to lead this bench rotation. Bastner's going to post up, in fact, going challenging one-on-one, -on -one, trying to take a shot over his defender. No good. Would like to see more of a drawn-up play there, especially when his defender posted up against him so early, had no chance to really drive to the basket. Come off. Goes up the shot, fouled by Mahi. Baltimore a chance to earn their points from the line. Again, no go on the first. First miss from the free throw line tonight. Goldshine's going to be subbed out for Corbin. Good on the second. Baltimore, no lack of talent at the shooting guard position between Goldshine, Dunbar, and Corbin. We're going to see Vasu going for a three early in the shot clock. Bassenhut trying to put the team on his back and it's just not working. We're going to see a fast break. Courtney goes for a quick shot, fouled by Mahi again. Second personal foul. Might see him sub out even though he's a bench player. Again, Baltimore. That's their sixth point from the line. Chance for seven. In fact, we're not going to see him sub out. We're actually going to see Baltimore making a change. Mark Cantor the third come in. No good on the second free throw. Still Baltimore up by eight. Barsky took it into the paint, dished it back out to Bora from the top of the key. Rims in and out. Corbin with the rebound. San Jose is throwing away any momentum they had right now with these quick shots that are a bit forced. It's still early in the game. They can't afford to give Baltimore a big lead. And we see Cantor going for three off the front iron. No good. Mendoza the rebound, thankfully. Yona blocked on the way up. Crowd by Mendoza. Stripped again by Vastin, who almost lost it. Barsky going for three. As the shot clock was starting to wind down, finally a bucket coming out from San Jose's bench. Some life once again being breathed into the thrust. On the perimeter, driving into the paint. Amoth dishes. Cantor ends up with the ball on the perimeter. Corbin now back down to Duvall, who lays it up and in over his defender. The Python using his superior size there to his advantage. You're going to see San Jose calling the first time out tonight. Can't blame them with how the bench has played so far. Fast and Hoot forcing it early in the shot clock in the last number of possessions has really cost them. Vega going to pass the ball in bounds to Mendoza. 
I'd like to see San Jose continuing with a post play. Mendoza is a strong presence down the post, and Bassett can use his speed to get into the lanes, but they've just given up on it early. And Mahi running out of time, calls for the screen. Three seconds left, not doing good shot clock management there. Forced to take a bad three as shot is winding down. White lights going for three, left wide open, no good. Might have been trying to show off there, but Courtney's not known for her threes. However, when you're left that open, you might as well take the shot to tell the defense that you deserve to be respected at that range, no matter how far they're down. And we see five second violation called on Bassin Hoop. That is a very uncommon um, penalty call, five seconds to the back back to the basket just got stuck needed to back out and or pass the ball there costly turnover possibly as Baltimore is trying to play an isolation game drives into the paint up and in defense did not collapse fast enough out there Baltimore now the biggest lead of the game at 9 27 to 18 San Jose thrust to ice cold after scoring nine points in the first four minutes they have struggled Mahi going for three that's one way to try and keep your team in it. As long as he's making the threes, the Frost can hold on to whatever deficit they have let build. And we're going to see Bassin, who's two seconds left, going to take a half court heave. Not even that he's close. But possibly could have passed it up there for a better shot. Ending the quarter 27, Baltimore. 21, San Jose thrust down by six. Could have been worse. They were down by nine until that three-pointer from Mahi on the second to last possession of the game. Play free. We're going to see both teams bring back in their starters. San Jose needs to get that scoring they had early back on the roll. Nine points in the first four minutes of the first quarter. They only managed to score 12 over the next eight whereas Baltimore kept their average at nine points every four minutes. Jazz going up for a difficult matchup there. No good. Pick your boss with the ball. Giving over to Goldshine, who's coming off the bench. Boss had a lane at the basket. We've had some bad switches, though. The defense was not talking. Boss long two. Foot was on the line, not a three. Jazz was on him. Thought he was switching with Sarah. Miscommunication there. Left uh, Victor Voss wide open. And you see a, a silly turnover coming out from the last match there. San Jose, arguably the better team, is struggling right now. With these silly turnovers and poor field goal percentage. And you see Balls driving in. He's feeling it tonight. One on one against Sarah. Bites to the contact, gets the bucket to fall. 10-point lead, first of the game for either team. And Jazz almost passed the ball out of bounds. Warrior able to get a hold of the ball. Sarah now with the ball. Off the screen from Jazz. This is the Jazz on the way in, lays it up and in. Thrust going back to that post play. It's where they've been productive tonight. Now they just need to apply some pressure on defense and stop Baltimore. They can't allow them to continue scoring at a 58% field goal percentage. See a dish over to Anderson Rhodes. Three from the right sideline. Bounces up, up, up. No good, but Hartnett, offensive rebound and the putback. That's what I'm talking about. Defense, no boxing out there. Hartnett was able to grab the ball between three thrust defenders and put it right back up. Jazz needs to box out, or Gakar, where's he? Jazz doing it on his own from the top of the yard, takes it in himself off the pump fake. Not sure why anyone would bite for that. Jazz cannot hit a three on a normal day. Hartnett gonna answer back, fouled by Gakar, not hard enough though, and she's able to force it in. Leopard going to the line for one more. Both teams equal in points in the paint, no good on the free throw. Can't extend the lead beyond 10. Rust. Lawyer gonna play in isolation, gets around his man, steps into the paint, takes a stand-up jumper rather than continuing the drive as the defense collapsed. No good though. Dunbar 
on the perimeter. Gets a double screen. Had a chance to keep going, but I think she was not prepared to take on Jazz. And we see Victor Vos shooting a three long range. No good. None of power behind it as it bounced off the front iron. Back car back over to Sarah. Sarah. I think they're trying to get Lawyer open. Or Jazz down low in the post again, leaving him to fight with Tessa one on one. He is winning right now. 13 points so far tonight, leading the thrust in scoring. Almost half the points from the thrust have come from him, and Gakkar again fouls Contessa this time, makes sure she can't make a bucket. However, the leper goes to the line for two. Makes the first one, you know, one to bounce around. We're going to see Jazz sub out for Bora. Maybe give the Shark a bit of a breather and hope to bring him back in as the second quarter comes to a close. Tessa no good on the second. Lawyer gonna take a shot early, was left open, nothing but net on that. Swish all day, first basket from him tonight besides that opening layup. Hasn't been able to produce from the mid-range or farther until that last shot. We see Bo, yeah, Bo was blocked. Lawyer, one-on-one -on -one fast break, trying to lay it in on his own. Defense from behind was able to put enough on him. Anderson Rhodes causing the miss there. Lawyer is going to be beating himself up over that missed opportunity. Especially after the steal coming in from Bo. So we see Samuel Roberts dishing over to Fantasia, the two big furs working together to get the bucket there. Lawyer just did not have enough speed to outrun the clouded leopard. Natch over from the left sideline for three. No good. Hartman gets the rebound. Contessa perfect from the floor tonight. We're going to see a fast break. Up tempo. Goldshine into the paint. This is that got to Voss to slow it down. Victor Voss playing some isolation. Getting double teamed for a second there as the defense rotated over. Tried to go for a steal. Blocked again. Akkar sent out of bounds. 4.6 seconds for Baltimore. We're going to see a substitution. Nash is going to step out for Farsky. And Rockwell is coming back in for Baltimore. However, Quintessa Hartnett's been sat. 4.6 seconds. Don't be surprised if they go to Rockwell. Off the inbound, no good. Lawyer with the rebound. Fast break. High tempo. Takes it up. Fouled by Rockwell. Blocking, I believe. They're going to not call it a shooting motion foul. Since he wasn't in the process of shooting, he won't go at the line. Good way to get some early contact. Hopefully put him in some foul trouble. That would be a goal they need to aim for. Sarah, beautiful dish there. Realized he was about to be blocked hard by Samuel Roberts. Underhand passes to Gakkar, who was open. Roberts forced to turn around and foul him. Gakkar going to come down to his free throw shooting right now. Good on the first. Took a while, but good on the second. Seven point lead for Baltimore, 38 to 31. Seven minutes and 20 seconds left in the second quarter. Thrust need to continue to whittle this lead down. Sposs is gonna try and get by Sarah. Another isolation play being drawn up for him. Spin move, force the dishes to Goldshine on the perimeter. Over to Rockwell, who steps into his shot. Over Barsky, good on the bucket. Not hampered by the pressure at all there. Or uh, passing it over to Lawyer. Lawyer, down low to Barsky, dangerous pass. Barsky unable to spin around and put it in, you know, between two defenders. I'd like to see the thrust bring Jazz back out. He's not in foul trouble, and they really need his presence in the post right now. They haven't been able to do much on the perimeter tonight. Boyer matching up against Goldshine. Goldshine forced to pass over to Roberts, who got in the positional advantage down there in the post. Lays it up and in. Again, Spirits. High field goal percentage of 58. Thrust have picked theirs up a little bit from what had happened by the end of the first quarter. However, they've not made a major dent defensively in terms of stopping Baltimore. And the score reflects that. Besides 
being beaten at the foul line by Baltimore. We're going to see, I think, Lawyer getting, nope, Sarah is going to get the ball dished in him. The rest need to focus on defense right now. Their offense, while it has struggled, they cannot chip away at this lead unless they stop Baltimore. And we're going to see Lawyer finally starting to heat up from long range. A three left open. Back to a single-digit game. Now can the thrust stop Baltimore is the question. Anderson Rhodes steps in high. Arcus Ball challenges the defender. The rookie's getting some confidence now. Fighting down low in the post like that. We can see Barsky laying it up and in. The thrusts are matching tit for tat right now with Baltimore, but as we've seen, Baltimore has not been the first to flinch at all tonight. It's always been a thrust. And yeah, I say that. Bora with the interception. Bad pass coming out from the balls. Lawyer going to bring the ball to the court. Meerkat dishing it over to Barsky, who's open for three. Off the front iron, no good. Could have been a big opportunity there to cut down this lead. Rockwell, no good from his three attempts. Roberts with the offensive rebound, though, no good on the putback. San Jose, Dawes is a bullet there. We're going to see a fast break. Sarah, teardrop shot. That ball went higher than most threes do, and it lands perfectly in the net. Doesn't even touch the rim. That's a textbook definition of a teardrop there. I had enough time to take a drink and still admire how high that ball arced. Rockwell left it open at the top of the key. No gun, his shot. Thrust, first chance tonight to get it back to a four-point game, possibly, with a bucket here. Three if they go for a three. Boyer getting open on the perimeter. Looks like he's going to want to dish it to Sarah or over to Gakkar. Gakkar going to give it to Lawyer. Lawyer double team on the shot. He's three for three this quarter, I believe. Or at least three in a row for him. Back to a four-point game. That is how the thrust can get back in it. They don't miss a shot, and they make Baltimore make silly mistakes. Rockwell trying to find a shooting stroke. That is three straight shots he has taken straight onto the basket that he has missed. He was four for seven before those last three attempts. He has gone cold. There's been no defender either time. I see Boyer strip, but he strips it right back. What is this craziness going on? Barsky going up for the shot. Fouled by Roberts. Somehow the ball had enough power to roll on in. But before that, Lawyer stripped by the Cobra, but then the Meerkat, unwilling to be outdone, steals it right back. And we're going to see both teams giving their players a breather. I definitely need one after that quick turnaround. Thrust a chance to get it back to a one-point game shot. here. Find the lane. Find the lane. One shot. Good. Baltimore 44, San Jose thrust 43. Three minutes and 48 seconds left in the second quarter. Rockwell pump fakes, but given the willingness of San Jose to let him shoot, they are willing to let him waste shots. We see Courtney going up. Fouls Barsky. Minimal contact. Barsky's not happy with the call. Courtney will go to the line for two. Good on the first. Baltimore has done most of their work from the line tonight. No good on the second. As I say that, they have missed a couple on their last few attempts. Notably from Quintessa. We're going to see Yosef on the floor now. Going for a screen. Gets open. Dishes instead of taking the shot. Bassett dude. First bucket for him tonight, I believe. Much better shot opportunity there. He had a designed play for him to get open in the paint. This eight-footer was good. Defense was not around him, however. The thrust need to maintain their defensive pressure that they found in the last couple minutes because it has worked. Rockwell, time expiring, drives into the paint. This time fouled by Vega. Vega playing a little too aggressively, let him get by. The Wolf Cheetah was unable to get the bucket though. Going for a free throw, misses one. Surprising, Baltimore, so hot from the free throw line to start, has struggled here. Gun the second, gives Baltimore the lead once again. However, 
San Jose thrust, chance to take the lead for the first time in a long time. It's been almost a quarter since the last time. Bassinu, bad pass, trying to give it to one of his players in the post. We see Cassidy Whitelatch. Cassidy, ooh, sorry, I'm mistaking. Courtney for his, her brother. The two Collies. Bassinu, another bad pass. This time actually able to be picked up by Vega. And we're gonna see a flagrant one caught into balls. That's a little surprising. We're gonna see one shot taken and then... Ooh, Vega needed to make that shot. I'm sorry, two shots. Again, looking at that differential in turn, misses a second. Two easy shots. No one should miss those. There's no pressure on you. They still maintain possession, though, with a full shot clock, thanks to the flagrant one by Duvall. Yosef way in the corner. Giving it over to Bassin, who is going to go for the jumper. He gets it to fall. That's his second in a row for the young Beach Martin. Duvall's going to have to watch his fouls. If he gets another flagrant one, he may be ejected. I believe it's two flagrant ones if you're ejected. Nice screen move, gets him open. No gun, the shot though, Vega with the rebound. Fast and food. Giving over to Golton. Yona, wanting the ball back, I think. He might be starting to feel it now, even though he started off really cold. And yeah, we're gonna see it dished over to Mendoza. Mendoza, over to Vega. Vega had to do some acrobatics to get the ball. Three seconds left, drives into the paint. Lays it up and no, not good. Rockwell able to put enough pressure. Too much power put behind the shot. Corbin got into the paint, decided to slow down. Pass shot got the court knee over to Ama. Amith. Rockwell left open, top of the perimeter. Able to finally get it after four attempts. Still three for six now from the three point line. Two of those being wide open misses. Maybe San Jose will start to play him a bit tighter again. Vega, acrobatic shot after knocking over his defender. And we've seen both teams close the margin in the field goal percentage. Baltimore still shooting better than the thrust are. However, it's closed a four point, four percentage point differential. Now it's really just coming down to the free throw and we're gonna see Courtney going for three, no good. Mendoza with the rebound. Two on two fast break was possible, but they decided not to push it. San Jose, a chance to get two possessions with this game clock. However, intercepted by Rockwell. Bad pass coming in from Bahimahi. I'm a block from behind. Corbin gets the rebound, though. The defense wasn't ready or prepared for the defensive stop. Thrust now. Shot clock turned off. They will get the last possession unless they shoot it early. They can't regain the lead. However, they can get this back to a one-point game with a three, or at least a one-possession game if they make a bucket. Mahi, who was good from the three-point line earlier, might take a last-second shot. Yes, he's going to do it with two seconds left. Off the front iron, no good. One of the arguments for shot clock management in the final possession is that you actually want to take the shot with about eight seconds left. That gives you about a two-second flight to the basket and then a chance for your defender your offensive player to possibly get an offensive rebound and put it back up if you leave too much time it's possible for your opponent to make up the court however if you leave about four to three seconds left it's entirely possible for your player to get the offensive rebound and put it right back up look at the two teams so far Victor Vos Two turnovers, however, five assists counteract that eight points. Rockwell leading the way for Baltimore, even though five for 11 could be shooting a higher percentage, especially after he cooled down there for a little bit in that second quarter. Three rebounds, one steal. Anderson Rhodes, the rookie, four points, two rebounds. Quintessa on her way to a double-double with five rebounds, seven points, two big blocks coming out from her as well. Aurora... Only taking one shot coming off the bench. However, two assists and a steal showing off her uh, court awareness, even if the ball's not in her possession. Courtney, not Cassidy, White Latch, six points. 
two for four from the free throw line, though. Sarah Dunbar, three points, coming from the three-point line, in fact. Two rebounds and an assist. Roberts, four points, four rebounds in his limited minutes. Teja Emoth, one point coming from the free-throw line and two assists. Corbin, two points, two rebounds, and an assist. Duvall, four points, two rebounds. A steal on a block, however, a flagrant one called on him in the game. Did not result in any points, though. However, he needs to be careful avoid an ejection. Cantor, one rebound in his six minutes on the floor. Moving on over to the thrust, we have Lawyer with nine points, four for eight. Four rebounds, three assists, and a steal, but doing a bit of everything. DeWitt, two points, five rebounds, two blocks. Good defensive presence coming out, especially in the second quarter, but getting those stuffs in. Sarah, six assists, four points. Needs to do more on the offensive end aside from passing. He's managed to limit the turnovers that have won so far. Nash, two points, an assist, and one turnover. Bahi, Bali Mahi. Three points. One for four, however, tonight. One rebound and a block. Fast and hoot. Two for seven. Started to heat up there in the second quarter, but only four points and four assists from the Rook. Jazz. Thirteen points in his ten minutes on the floor. Don't be surprised if you see him more often in the second half. Perhaps managing his minutes in order to optimize his production in the second half of this game. Vora, four rebounds, one steal, and Mendoza, four rebounds, and a blank stat line aside from that. Rachel Barsky, the unsung hero on the thrust, coming off the bench, ten points in only eight minutes. Vega, two points, two rebounds, and Yosef, two assists in his six minutes on the floor. The thrust need to get Jazz back in this game consistently and continuing to abuse down low in the post. It started to get their perimeter game open. And with players like Lawyer starting to hit their shots, that is the opportune moment. In fact, speaking of Lawyer, open on the left sideline. No gun early shot. Can't blame him for taking that though. Rockwell was slow on the rotation. We're gonna see a Drive into the basket coming out from Dunbar. Lays it up and in early for Baltimore. 55 to 49 is the scoreline going into this third quarter. 11 minutes and 30 seconds left. Lawyer on the perimeter. Going to dish it out to Jazz. Jazz backing up to the rim. Over to Sarah, who's left open as they were double teaming. He gets his own offensive rebound, though, and puts it back up. Contessa on the foul. Leopard got a little too physical there with the easel. Chance for two from the line. Sarah had an open shot from 10 feet out. Should have made it. Should have made the free throw two. A little short on it. May have been beat up a little bit by that hard foul coming out from Contessa. The gun second though. 50 points now for the thrust. Big pass down to Quintessa. Another early basket. The rest are losing the battle down low in the post against Baltimore on defense. It's two quick plays coming easily for Baltimore. Jazz gets big over the defender on Jazz. Over to the steal, leaving Jazz open for a drive to the basket. That is another easy bucket for the Shark. First he started off by warming up at the free throw line with his two early baskets, and now he's really punishing down low. Balls off the screen, going for three, no good. Sarah wanted to go fast, but there was no one to help him really get down there fast, uh, for a fast break. However, he gets by his man, goes for another teardrop. Good again, that's his second teardrop of the night. Not as beautiful as his first one, but I'll let it pass with the result. San Jose actually making more baskets so far than Baltimore. However, they've lost the free throw line battle. We're gonna see Dunbar fading away. Not enough power behind it off the front side iron. Lawyer now at the ball. Sorry, that was Vols with the fadeaway, not Dunbar. 
Dad card pump fakes from three point land. No one's going to bite on that. Sarah. Looking like he wants to get over to Lawyer. Lawyer calls for the screen. Wants to give to Gakkar, who got open off the screen play. Defender got over there in time to put just enough pressure. Gakkar was trying to go for some contact, not able to fight it through. Lawyer with the strip. Barely saves it. Actually was not able to save it. Still out of bounds. Baltimore retains possession. However, 12 seconds on the shot clock. Lawyer almost diving out of bounds there to get it in. Has to be mindful, can't afford an injury as the season is wrapping up. Thrust are projected to make the playoffs. Baltimore, good on the bucket. Had a short time to draw up the play, was able to get it in. Now we're going to see the thrust. Down by five, still Jazz open. Free throw line steps into the paint. Gakkar fouls. Trying to get to the basket as Jazz missed. Had the bucket been good, it would have counted. However, since it was not, the play ended with the foul. And that's his third, I believe. Almost blocked there. Dish to Hartnett. Roberts, open lane to the basket. Could not get close enough. Decides not to take the shot. Passes back out to Sarah Dunbar. Intercepted, stripped by, I believe that was Nat. We see Sarah going up. Fouled on the way up by Dunbar. Forced to take the contact, even though this time, good on the first. Maybe a chance for two. No good. A little short there. Not able to find his shooting tonight. Sarah has struggled from the line. We see a double block. I can't tell if it was Lawyer or Plath who got the block there. Both of them were in his face. We see Lawyer going for a higher from ball. No good. Boss for the rebound. Long range two, no good. And this time we're going to see Jazz in with a lot of bounds. San Jose putting the pressure up on Baltimore, getting the blocks left and right now. They needed this in the first half. Goldshine going in, fouled hard by Cora. However, he'll give that up considering she had an open drive to the basket going. And good on the bat on the first one, misses. Makes the foul worth it there. Good on the second, 16-55, still a five-point game. Thrust just within reach. Here we see Jazz too fast for Hartnett there. Just strolled his way to the basket. We see Voss trying to match back. Isolation play, gets into the paint, going for another shot. Blocked once again, this time by Gakkar. That's his third of the Arbora song. That's his first of the night. Block after block, it's gonna start taking the mental effect on the Baltimore Spirits players as they become hesitant to take these shots. Goldshine, blocked again! Where is this defensive pressure coming from? That's four blocks in the last four possessions, it seems like, and Nash gonna go up. No defensive pressure from Hartnett, just wanted to stick her paws up in the air and not get called for the foul. San Jose getting back into the Baltimore needs to call a timeout in my opinion. They're letting these thrust players get in their heads. They have put block after block on this team. Balls pump fakes. Can't get anyone to bite. Goldshine now pump fakes as well. Not a biter again. Playing close is Barsky. Two seconds left. Goes up for the last second shot. Not blocked this time. However, Jazz with the rebound. No good. Aura passing over to Nash. Nash wanted to give it down to Jazz. Jazz faces his man, gives it back to Sarah, who wanted to step in for a three, but he gives it over to Nash. Nash for three. San Jose thrust first lead of the game in a long time again. They have not held the lead for long in any of their runs. However, with the way the momentum's going, I'm surprised Baltimore hasn't called a timeout. It's been a 13-5 run for San Jose in this opening half, second half. We're going to see a screen for Aurora. No good. Defender is right on her. Another last second shot. This time good though. Stealing the lead back for Baltimore. My heart was racing. Expecting a block there considering as the shot clock runs down, your options are very limited. It's usually where you see the majority of the blocks coming in. 
on the perimeter. We're going to see Sarah stepping into his own shot, rattles around, finally falls back and forth once again. Sarah close to a double double at this point. We're going to see an interception by Barsky. Well, it was Vora. And end of green grab by Barsky and Jazz shooting down, jumps high enough to basically drop the ball in from five feet out. Jazz playing a key role in this resurgence. So far tonight, five steals and seven blocks from San Jose. Definitely a high hustle stack coming out from that, this team tonight. Goldshine gets a screen, however, gets into the bank. No jump there, however, three defenders around her made it too difficult for her to make the basket thrust. Looking to put a lead together, Sarah, turn around three. No good, it's gonna just bounce. I thought it was going to bounce out of bounds. Boss decides to grab it, though, as you saw. The left coming up from behind. Dunbar getting into the paint. However, size is not in her advantage here. She goes in for a shot. She may be blocked. Decides to dish it out to Hartnett. Hartnett over to Goldshine on the perimeter. Gets a screen. Gets in. Almost blocked from behind. However, Goldshine putting in the work for the Baltimore bench, keeping them close here. In the last two possessions, it's come down to her. Rust wanting to continue the momentum that they've built here. The crowd getting behind their defense, trying to get some energy going. Barsky for three. No good though. As Shockwell was lying down, forced to take the shot there. Goldshine. Keep dishing it to her right now. She is hitting her shot under pressure. Boss trying to drive in. No good. Forced to dish over Goldshine. Goldshine, the Cobra. Gets into the paint, forced to pick it up. Gives it over to Roberts. Roberts not able to make much headway either. Forced to back out the boss who has a fadeaway. Hartnett, offensive rebound. Another chance for Baltimore to retake the lead once again. Four minutes left in the third quarter. Dunbar giving over to Voss on the right sideline. Matched up against Jazz. He has the speed advantage, not the height. Somehow manages to get it in over Big Shark. Don't know how he finagled the ball around Jazz there to get it in. Barely rolled in though. Baltimore the lead once again, 67 to 66. Bora gonna pass it in to Mendoza. Substitutions for both teams. Bad pass by Mendoza. Young player not anticipating now. We're gonna see Hartnett answering the turnover with a fast break. Baltimore 69, San Jose thrust 66. Baston Hoop bring the ball to the court for San Jose thrust. Gets a lane to the basket. One with the shot. This should have been Nash on the right sideline. No good for three. Hartnett with the rebound. Baltimore chance to put some. Ooh, nice pass out there and one close to Corbin with a shot from one foot out. As I was saying, Baltimore a chance to make their mark once again, regain a lead. The bench from San Jose Thrust has struggled tonight. Doza passing over to Nash. Nash back to Baston Hoop. Baston Hoop on the perimeter, driving in, backing up into the paint. Going for the shot over Timothy. Or Tajay, sorry. Gets the shot in the foul. No good on the free throw, though. And we see Rockwell in the rebound, passing up to Emma. Back over to Rockwell. Calls for a screen from Hartnett. Big pass over to Courtney, cross court. She can't make the long two fall though. 19 footer, no good. Lawyer almost unable to get the ball back under control there. Forced to pick it up as his defender's playing him really close. Gora passing over to Bassin, who Lawyer might be their best scoring. Possibility. We see another foul coming out from Tajay again. Bassin who another two shots from the line, missed his last one, but good on this. Or subbed out for Eckhar. Bassin who good on the second, gets it back to a one point game. However, Baltimore turns it over. Bad turnover from Baltimore, chance for San Jose thrust. Can they capitalize on it? 
Gakar left open, fouled by Quintessa. Another flagrant one coming out. That's the second flagrant one tonight from Baltimore. We are seeing a physical fight down low in the post. With the bucket, he'll get two from the line and San Jose thrust retain possession. This could be a six point play by the end of it. Good on the first, three point play, one more. Actually, no, that's right, since he made the basket, it's not a double. Still could be a six point play off the three though. A flagrant one off of a shot is not something you want to do. Mendoza over to Mahi. Back up to Mendoza. Back over to Bastin. On the perimeter, calls for a screen, gets open, however, has to take a difficult shot, no good. San Jose Thrust unable to get anything from that gifted possession. Back we're gonna see a quick play and yet another quick steal from Bastin who almost loses it there again. However, able to get back, almost lost another time. Having some difficulty getting up the court and we're gonna see if Bast over Mahi pump fakes. Does not get anyone to bite. Lawyer for three though, top of the key. No good, Gakar with the offensive rebound and the put back is good. 75 to 71, San Jose thrust up by four with a little over a minute left in the third quarter. It has been San Jose's starters that have continued to score here. And some free gifts coming out from Baltimore in terms of turnovers. Their field goal percentage has not dropped significantly aside from that block fest we saw in the earlier. We see Rockwell driving into the basket, could have dunked it, laid it up and in. Baltimore not playing around anymore, bringing some of their starters back out. Moyer dishes over to Baston, who going up, intercepted by Anderson Rhodes. Cut him leopard is too fast, rookie on rookie violence there. Rockwell from 15 feet out is able to make the bucket and ties up at 75 apiece. Theodore Rockwell. Finding his stroke once again from the deep range. He struggled for a little bit there in the second quarter. Trying to drive into the paint. Stop though. Ends up stepping into the shot. No good. Rockwell at the rebound. Mendoza was not able to position himself. Either. Going to see Corbin going for three from the top of the woods. No good. Bastion who. Baltimore defense collapses back fully. Five against three ends up slowing down. One to take the last shot. The game is tied at 75 apiece. San Jose Thrust has a chance to end the quarter with the lead. Two seconds left again. Bahi Mahi going to take a three. No good once again from the same spot. He took the final shot of the second quarter. Neither team with the lead here. However, I would say... Starter-wise, I give the advantage to San Jose. They had the momentum. However, when their bench came in, they really struggled there. Letting Baltimore stay close and regain some of the momentum that had been lost during that block fest from the thrust. Can the thrust continue that defensive pressure? Can they keep that hustle up, or will they continue to tire? Vos gets by his defender as he overcommitted on the steal there. Vastenhoot. The rookie a little too anxious, and we're going to see Sarah being called up to substitute. Can't afford to keep making those mistakes in crunch time. San Jose has less than 12 minutes left. Jazz continuing to dominate the post. Ties it back at 77 apiece. Make a wish, 77-77. Dunbar going up and in, lays it nicely. Actually, sorry, Vos lays it up and in. He's found his shooting late here tonight. Lawyer left open for three. Hierarchy ball, no good. Off Too much power behind it, off the iron. Could have stolen the lead there, could have been good. Anderson Rhodes, pass back over to Vos. Dunbar left sideline for three. She's able to make it. Gives Baltimore a five-point lead. Don't be surprised if you see San Jose take a timeout here just to get Sarah back on the floor. However, they decide not to. Jazz left open at the free throw line. Waltzes in to the bucket and lays it up and in. 
However, we're going to see Anderson Rhodes almost had a chance to do it himself. Fouled by Jazz this time. Goes to the line. We're going to see Quintessa brought back in for Baltimore. Baltimore is good on the free throw. Six-point lead. Not able to stop Baltimore's offensive power. Letting them build up a lead again from long range and the three-point conversion from the line is damaging. We're going to see a double team from Jazz. No surprise. Forced turnover there. Contessa, I believe, was the one credit to steal. Baltimore now a chance. Dunbar was good for three from earlier. Could take another one. Offensive violation. Thrust will get possession. Contessa was in the paint for three seconds. And that is poor turnover, especially since they have built the momentum in their favor. The game has been going their way in the start of the fourth quarter. Natch left open, does a fadeaway shot. A bit more challenging than it needed to be, and it's no good. Boss giving it to Rockwell. He's been shooting from the top of the arc all night. Finally, another basket. It's, he's able to stretch the defense there, but Gakar needs to play him tight on the perimeter. And oh, he struggles from that range. But Jazz left open. Been the only saving grace of San Jose right now. He has been consistently shooting from that close range and winning every battle against Quintessa. Now, if only the defense can put a stop to it. And again, Rockwell for three. They. No surprise from San Jose calling a timeout here. Gankar is not playing his man tight enough. Leaving Rockwell open for three all day. Coach probably wants to tell him he needs to be playing chest to chest with Rockwell. He was missing his shots earlier, but not anymore. And Lawyer might need to start making the threes if they want to keep themselves in it. However, Jazz getting a little angry now, slamming the dunk down. Making a statement, causing Baltimore's crowd to just quiet at this sheer ferocity of that dunk. Surprised it didn't bend any. Let's see Rockwell matched up against Jazz this time. That may be the switch they're wanting to make. He's going to be forced out of bounds. Jazz against Rockwell might be the better matchup. Even though it might mean Quintessa is going to have a bit more of a free reign. Jazz, top of the perimeter. Give it to Lawyer. Lawyer needs to start hitting his threes. Or if he can step in and make a two, no good though. Rockwell with the rebound. Dunbar. Voss on the perimeter. Back over to Rockwell. Rockwell from 10 feet out. Off the front iron. Battle for the rebound. Rockwell ends up with it. Foul by Jazz. Going to the line for two with a little under eight minutes left to go in the fourth quarter. Good on the first. Chance to get back to a 10-point lead, and he does. Good on the second. Sarah going to bring the ball up the court for Thrust. Giving over to Jazz. Jazz has been a one-man show, and it's stripped, and that is the risk of a one-man show. Defense will start figuring out how to counter it eventually. Jazz is a dominant force, but even double or triple team, he can be stopped. Boss being played really close. Pushed way onto the perimeter. Two seconds left. Finally finds his way into the paint. Defense is strong, though. Gakar just keeping his paws up. Did not want to go for a foul there. He's using his height to his advantage to keep Boss from making that shot. Over to Jazz. Jazz back over to Lawyer. Lawyer for three. Again, a little too much power. Hasn't been able to find his shooting stroke from long range tonight. Down by 10. Rockwell with the possession again for Baltimore. Passing cross court to Rhodes from the right sideline. Can't get the long two to fall. Four on four fast break. Boyer, this time from short range, is able to find his bucket. That's one way to rebuild your confidence. Quick little layups like that. 
It doesn't really help his rhythm from long range, but it helps build that confidence right back up. Dunbar trying to match up against a uh, match. Fighting to get into the paint. No good, though. Full 24 seconds spent there trying to get into the basket. Boyer over to Sarah. Sarah over to Natch, who's left open on the right sideline. Again, some of these open shots, thrust are going to be beating themselves up over. They're taking them early in the shot clock, which is not an issue if they're open. However, they're not converting. We're going to see Ball scoring for a long three from the woods. No good. Lawyer, three on three, passing over to Sarah. Sarah, fancy layup, gets it to fall. Thrust are not dead yet. Five minutes and 30 some seconds left on the game clock. Down by six. If they can put up a couple more stops, they can tie this game right back up. Rockwell, looks like they're going to step it up to him. However, decides not to take the shot. Giving over to Falls. Falls back to Anderson Rose. Back to Rockwell. Rockwell, two seconds left, is going to have to take the shot. However, defense is in his face this time. Gakar is not going to let him be open from the perimeter. And a three on one. Two fast breaks. Sarah takes the shot. Despite the contact, gets it to fall. Good plays coming out from Thrust here as clock is starting to wind down on them. They were starting to run out of time to make up the deficit, and here they are. Rhodes, right sideline, no good. Hartnett, the offensive rebound, fouled, and the bucket. Might as well have been three if she could make it. However, rattles around, finally falls, seven-point deficit. Good plays from San Jose there. Even though they end up giving away the offensive rebound, the defensive pressure, forcing the dish to the rookie lawyer. Confidence maybe back. Definitely showing off to the crowd. Hit a long two. However, Paws were inside the three-point line. Can't fault him for showboating a little bit there after his on and off night so far. That's been a big play. And we see an out-of-bound pass coming from Baltimore. That was Aurora Goldshine. Sending it sailing out of bounds thrust. Another chance here, finally. Four minutes and 18 seconds left. Sarah left open on the perimeter. Calls for a screen from Mendoza. Passing back to Mendoza. Mendoza laying it up and in off the give and go screen. Gets it back to a three point game. And we're going to see Thrust resting back on her. We see Vols driving in against Sarah. Can't get the bucket to fall. San Jose Thrust has a chance to tie it with a three here. Sarah's going to take it up and in on his own, though. Can't get the bucket to fall, but does get the contact. Sarah deciding to turn it up in this last quarter on his own if he has to. No gun the first, though. He has struggled from the free throw line tonight. He needs to make the second one. He does. Two point game, 96 to 94. Aurora Goldshine passing on the Vols. Vols up over the defender. Sarah was not prepared for Vols to shoot off the dribble like that. Did not get upon his face. Sarah passing over to Mendoza. Mendoza back to Moyer. Moyer pump fakes a three. Gives it back to Jazz. Jazz instantly double teamed. Even with a double team, fights up and over and gets it to fall. Continuing to be their main go-to player in these situations. Keeping within two is the thrust's goal. Baltimore has been making some silly turnovers that have really cost them in the end. Mendoza, screen, however, quickly around it. That might be his whole goal in this last quarter is to play Rockwell tight as possible. Balls gets his own miss, puts it back up, gets a foul this time on Jazz. Costly foul there, would have rather they should have gotten the offensive rebound after his miss. However, they coughed it up. Back to a five-point game off the three-point play. Again, San Jose Thrust don't have to panic. They just need to stay within a bucket. Lawyer for three, right sideline. Nothing but net in the clutch. He has started to heat up here. Thrust may start going to him as the clock winds down. Baltimore down by two. Balls going for a fadeaway early in the shot clock. Trying to do it on his own there. And we're going to see 
Nash bringing the ball to court. Dishing over to Sarah. Sarah might be thinking either Jazz or himself. Doesn't get the ball, but Jazz gets the offensive rebound and the putback. Ball picks a trip around the basket. Wasn't sure if it was going to fall, and we have a tie game. 101 apiece with a little over two minutes left. Dangerous pass. Ball gives it up to Jazz. Two on two, fast break. Lawyer taking it up on his own. Too much power behind it. Could have given Russ the lead with him. Two minutes left. However, misses. Baltimore needs to watch these turnovers. Harnett fouled by Jazz. That's his fourth. He's been racking them up quickly in this final quarter. However, with two minutes left, he can afford to give another one. Hartnett bad on the first. She is starting to wear out. Her endurance has always been a bit of a struggle. And she misses the second. Her definitely feeling the exhaustion now on the floor. Sarah. Dishing down the Jazz, who has the height advantage. Gives San Jose a thrust the lead with one minute and 37 seconds left. Jazz has been a constant tonight. It's been with Sarah and Lawyer showing up, but they finally managed to take the lead from Baltimore. If you'd asked me in the second quarter how this game was going to go, I certainly would have picked Baltimore to win it. They still can, though. They have the offensive firepower. Balls, Goldshine, Rock. Well, Balls going to lay it up and in on his own. Timeout, thrust. They're going to draw up a play. There's about five or six possessions left, depending on shot clock management at this point and how teams decide to foul. Neither team is probably going to want to foul until the game clock is turned off, though. Sarah, off the pass, gives it to Jazz, gets his own offensive rebound, puts it back up, fouled this time by the rookie. Beautiful play from Sarah. Pump fakes like he's going to take the shot off the inbound. Had it open. Jazz left in the paint, though, gets the ball. Unable to make the shot, though, gets his own offensive rebound with the foul. It's just icing on the cake as he gets a three-point play. Baltimore is now going to start feeling the pressure. They may try to push a three here between Brockwell and Boss and Goldshine. They definitely have three-point shooters all about. Goldshine dishes out to the perimeter, nails the three-pointer as I expected. We're going to see Thrust calling their own timeout. These last two minutes are going by slowly as both teams are burning through the timeout quickly, drawing up plays, intending to make sure they get a bucket here. Neither team can afford to flinch with a score tied at 106 apiece here. Lawyer now with the ball over to Sarah. Sarah from five feet out, no good. Might be the first flinch coming from San Jose. Rockwell taking the shot early in the shot clock, no good, Lawyer with the rebound. Four on four, could do a fast break, decides to slow it down, Sarah. Give it get to Jazz, Jazz double teamed already. No good, but Mendoza flying in with the offensive rebound and the putback, that is the issue with doing a double team. You leave a man open and when it's an offensive rebound, about Mendoza is not going to miss the opportunity to fly in and steal it. Ta, San Jose thrust up by two, Rockwell long two from the left sideline, nails it, nothing but net, ties it once again. Can this game get any closer? 108 apiece, 47 seconds left. Two possessions if the team's worn down. Lawyer almost loses the ball, however. Left open, goes for three. In the clutch, left open. Could have driven to the lane for a two. However, wants to put it away with a three. 35 seconds left. Baltimore needs to make a bucket here. Probably going to go for a three or get Rockwell into the post. No good. Hart now with the offensive rebound. Could have been... A three-point play, however, misses the shot. Jazz, five fouls. I think all five of them coming, four of them at least, coming in this fourth quarter. Hartnett, good on the first. Could make the second here. Now, Thrust, what do you do? Good on the second. They're going to call a full court press here. 28 seconds on the shot clock. Sarah's going to get the ball inbound. Thrust can burn. 21 seconds, leaving Baltimore with less than four seconds on the shot clock. Whether they miss or not, they have a one-point lead. Defense, a three-second violation from Hartnett. Huge problem. That's going to put Blatt at the nine for one. It's good. It doesn't make a huge difference 
immediately because Baltimore is probably going to be shooting a three anyways with the shot clock management. However, it does mean that if, Balt if a thrust make any kind of basket now, it puts Baltimore out of reach. If I was a thrust, I would look to take a two here if possible. Try and get to Jazz. Two seconds on the shot clock. Sarah's going to step inside the free throw line. Rockwell, that is a problem. A personal foul with 4.5 seconds left in the bonus. That's going to send him to the line for two. Jazz has a chance to put it away here. If he can get both of them, it will be a four-point game with 4.5 seconds left. However, if he misses one, Baltimore still in it with a timeout. They can get the ball up the court for a three-pointer, and he does miss the first one. He has to make this second one here to make Baltimore sweat. Everyone's off the floor, and he misses it. Baltimore calls it instant timeout. Three is what it takes to win two to tie Jazz. He's been perfect, basically, from the post. However, free throw line, this may cost him in the end. You can't blame him, though, for tonight's showing. He has been the reason why they are in it. All it will take from Baltimore is a three. However, San Jose Thrust also have a timeout. Baltimore needs to get a good shot up. Will it be a two to go for overtime, or will it be a three to go for the win? And who will take it? Rockwell, Voss, or Hartnett? Voss will probably be the one to inbound to initially. He is. 3.3 seconds left. Really far on the perimeter. Goes for a long three. No good. The buzzer beater is not good from Voss. Too far. Can't repeat the magic from his San Ana days. None of us can forget his buzzer beating three in the finals. Can't make magic happen twice. And as we go to the post game show, I'm pretty sure we all know who's going to be player of the game. Jazz would be shocked if he did not make it given his dominant performance. And of course, Jazz with almost 40 points in the game 36, six rebounds, and an assist. The main reason. The thrust stayed in this game. Going on over to Baltimore, Victor Vos double double tonight. In fact, three double doubles between their starters. 23 points for him, 10 assists. Rockwell, 10 rebounds, 28 points. Anderson Rhodes, 7 points, 5 rebounds. Quintessa, 16 points, 13 rebounds. Perfect from the floor, in fact, 6 for 6. However, 4 for 8 from the free throw line. Five offensive rebounds coming in tonight for her. Dunbar, eight points, two rebounds, and four assists. Goldshine, nine points, unable to really continue her scoring from the first quarter. Courtney, six points, two assists, and a steal. Roberts, four points, six rebounds, and assist. Corbett, four points, two rebounds, and assist. Tajay, one point, three assists. Cantor, one rebound. And Duvall, four points, two rebounds. Flying over to Thrust. Lawyer, 19 points, eight rebounds, two shy of a double-double. And six assists, four shy there from a double-double. Natch, eight points, two rebounds. Sarah, double-double of the night, 15 points and 13 assists. Jazz, 36 points in 30 minutes, six assists. One block and two steals. Gakkar, seven points, 11 rebounds. Perfect from the free throw line. Two blocks as well. Mendoza, seven rebounds, four points. Vora, four points, a block and two steals. Vastenhut, six assists, eight points. Three turnovers, though, from the rookie. Mahi, unable to capitalize off his one three. One for five tonight from the three point line. 10 points for Barsky. Two assists and one block. Vega, two points, two rebounds. And Yosef, two assists. Looking at the team comparison, first quarter was all Baltimore. 27 points to 21. Two for 10 from the three-point line from the thrust. Three big blocks also from Baltimore in the first quarter. Going into the second quarter, a thrust found their offensive 
and defensive mojo shooting 60% from the floor including three blocks and two steals did not get an offensive rebound though gave up three to Baltimore second quarter also went the way of the thrust even though it was far closer between the two they won the quarter at the free throw line Baltimore failing to get back there and the fact that they had four huge blocks and four steals which is almost a little scary considering that Baltimore even with those four blocks still hit 48 percent which meant they shot 10 for 17 on shots that weren't blocked had they made a few different choices they could have had far more points in this quarter and of course the fourth quarter that was a shootout between the two of them Baltimore stayed in it because of their three-point game and their free throw line shooting however the thrust 59% from the post basically all their points 26 from this quarter from the paint three from the three throw line very few points coming out from mid or long range only two threes and of course at the end of the night Baltimore shot far better from the three-point line and the free throw line it was the blocks that truly turned around the game for the thrust and just inked them out the victory and with that that ends the second to last sports then of the season I've been Ryan Eastman and please tune in next time as we will host the last game in Arizona where the whips will be fighting off the Hawaii kahunas thank you for tuning in and good night